grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. So right away, they had to make some seating arrangements. 
and there would be the grandfather, the youngest grandson, the grandmother, and the oldest grandson. Now that oldest grandson, he didn't care too much about what was going on in the church. He didn't care what the pastor was saying, he didn't care what people wore. Uh, he found it interesting that people were putting these little white envelopes and gold plated bowls at the usher and sending them down the pew or something. And occasionally he dropped in some copper and some silver of his own. And when he passed the bowl on the next person, he always thought, man, there goes some good candy bar and some soda pop. That's how, that's how selfish my he was. But the whole time back at church, one thing stuck out in his mind, and that's what people sang. When people sang in church. One voice in particular stuck out, and that was his grandmother's voice. Uh, she sang like an angel. But she could also really belt one out, too. I mean, really get after it. And that grandson, he, there wasn't a bucket big enough to, for him to carry it to him. He just couldn't say it. And she could play fluid piano and, and organ like there was no tomorrow. So he tried playing. And you can ask Joanna, that takes some talent to do. I mean, he, and that grandson tried, and he couldn't get his hands to do two different things. So he struggled with that. And the, the grandparents also had a younger son play guitar. And so when it came time for the grandson to get a guitar, he, he got one. And he played that thing until his fingers were shredded. Made a go of it, but, but still struggled with it. And I know he still struggles with playing and singing today. It's just what it is. But when it came time to, to, to sing in church, he, he'd look up at his grandmother and She'd be singing away and just smiling. And the next song, she'd be crying and just singing away. And he, he never asked her. It just must have been the way the song touched her like that. But the whole time, she'd be, she'd be nudging that grandson, tapping on that hymnal book and saying, now you sing, grandson. You sing. And he grabbed that hymnal. He looked it up. He looked up at his grandmother and he, pre he would pretend to sing just so he could hear his grandmother sing. That's how good she was. And he, he'd pray for a song with four verses in it. What we just played. Because she could sing harmony, four different harmonies to one song. She was just that good. Now I'm going to step ahead a little bit in the years. So, so now that, that oldest grandson, now he, he, he goes along his life and in and out of trouble and in and out of faith. And finally becomes a man. And marries and has a family, house and home, good job. Thought he had his life all in order and all in control. And then one day, it just dawned on him. He didn't have any control. So what he did was deny himself. He gave up. Tired of living the way it was. And he got down on his knees and asked for God to enter his mind, body, and spirit and ask Jesus into his heart. He waited 50 years. He had no relationship with the Lord or God. He knew of them but didn't know them. He waited 50 years. He surrounded himself with beautiful people. And his life his new life started. He's able to go out now to different churches and, and prayer breakfasts and homes from the Ohio River to the shores of Lake Erie and tell you a little story in front of 40 people or 200 people. It doesn't matter. He tells his little story about how God and Jesus changed his life forever. And people come to the altar call. It's not because of who the 
grandson is, or this, this man is a new man. It's not because of how he presents the story, because God's keeping his people in the backside and say, today's your day. Give it up and come right up here. About a month ago, he had an opportunity, this new man, to go out of state from Ohio. He had a chance to go to West Virginia. Now there's a couple of Baptist churches down there that would, would like to hurt his story. He's going to travel there with the music ministry. And he told them no. Because God had directed him to go back to his home church and listen to a young, inspired, influenced, upcoming pastor preach. He was obedient to God until that music ministry no. A week after that, the phone rings in his home. It's somebody from, it's a husband and wife that own a Christian TV talk show in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, through an NBC affiliate. They have a little Christian TV talk show. So now they want to pay his way down, put him up, interview him. And put him on a half hour Christian TV talk show. Now, how does that grandson go from standing beside his grandmother, looking up at her, pretending to sing, to hear her sing? 50 years later, wind up on a Christian TV talk show, a half hour TV, TV show. I, I know that man lacks scripture. He used to know it, but he's, he's been, been out of place unless he forgot. So what he did is he asked a younger man in his late 20s to help him with scripture. So now when he goes and tells his story, he's able to put scripture in him. I know he stops for five minutes every waking hour and just gives thanks because he still can. And what God and Jesus has done for his life. And I know he's constantly asking God and Jesus why they satisfied with him. You see, folks, that grandson, that old man, that new man, is me. It's me. My grandparents made sure that their grandkids got to church. The younger grandson in the story, that's my brother, Andy, Andrew John, AJ. The guitar player in the family is my uncle Brad and He inspired me to try my best to play this sixth year. The grandfather that brought all of us to church, this church, see my that was my grandpa, Ray Mark. And the woman that stood between her grandsons and sang so beautifully, that was my grandma, Kate. The man that's helping me with scripture, that's my friend, Brent. And the fellow that I wouldn't miss for the world is my friend, Jerry. I came back to my own church to listen to this young man preach. And the oldest son of the family, he's here today. He was off to war the whole time. And that's my uncle Dan now, he said right there. And the oldest of the members of the Maui family, the daughter, Victoria, she's homesick. That's my mom. You see, coming and loving and giving them is kind and loving and giving now. My Uncle Gail, my Aunt Sandy, and my mom and my stepfather there, and they wake up every morning wondering who it is that they're going to help. Be kind and loving and giving. Those my grand their parents influenced them. And the grandparents also influenced themselves. Now some things have changed since then. I do care. Pastor has to say, where I did it before. 
had a, a, a little Pastor Jeff. His, his wit, his, his charm, his format, and the way he carries himself, he knows I have his back. We are so blessed to have him. Some things never change. It doesn't matter to you what you all wear at church. You all look pretty nice this morning. And beyond popular belief, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, I've moved up from putting copper and silver in and gold blade bowls to putting paper in and all that. Christy made me do it. But there's still one thing about uh, remember, you know, that, that remembering, and it's true today, is when you open up the green envelopes here, all of you, and you open them up, and you sing. Because I hear angel, angel voices, and I hear people really coming out. Because I know, because I stand over there beside the woman I've known for 33 years, and I pretend to sing. Just to hear you sing. Wherever I'm at, I try to leave a message for you. I was once, if I was not those kids, you know, but what I'd like to say to the youth of this church is that listen to your mom and dad. Listen to your, your grandparents if you're fortunate enough to have grandparents. Listen to them and learn from them. Let them inspire you. Listen to the elders of this church. They're a walking gospel and a walking history lesson. They've been around a lot longer than you have. And don't wait. Don't wait for 50 years of your life to go by before you get Jesus in your heart. And Almighty God in your body, mind, and spirit. Don't wait. So that's my story for this morning. I'd like to take that story over into the question I asked you last week is so, so you, you, you've got your kids here at church and so how old does your child have to be to receive salvation? What is the truth? Is it, is it when the woman becomes with child? Is it when the, the, the baby is born and we bring it here to, to, to do the baptism? Or does it occur then? Preacher, pastor asks that God and Jesus to come in and put the baby's body and heart does it happen, Jewish custom says it happens at age 13. Brent and I researched this quickly and couldn't find an accountability of age, right? Age of accountability. God never said you had to be 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever. What, what do we do here at St. Michael? Do we send them to Sunday school and bring them up through the ranks of the catechism and come to this chancel rail and during confirmation and they become adult members of the church. Is that when salvation occurs? What happens before all that? I just want to read some scripture first before you go any farther. Proverbs 22 6 states, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from that's, that's my wife's, that, that's, that's what she held on to. Whole time I stepped away from faith for a lot of years. My wife brought our daughters to church when I wasn't here. Train up the child in the way he should go. Matthew 18, verses 1 through 5. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Well, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? What a question. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them. He put the child in with the disciples. <coughs> and said, Surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. But he wasn't done. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child 
is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. I don't even care anymore. I wasn't there. I went, I got it. Luke 18, verses 15 through 17. Then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. Parents were taking their kids, their toddlers, newborns, so Jesus could just touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Now, rebuke is a noun or a verb, and it means expression of disapproval. Now, why wouldn't the disciples want their parents, their parents to bring their kids to Jesus? But Jesus called to them, called them to him, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. The last church I spoke at, I had an opportunity to a motivational speaker was there. And we mixed ourselves in with the crowd. And there were 200 people there. And I don't have a problem walking up to a youngster and say, hey, I'm Alan. What's your relationship with Jesus today? I got no problem asking. And there's, there, there's a family standing over there. They're well-groomed. They're dressed. And, and, and they're beaming. There's an aura around. I, I go over to them. And I ask them. Same question. Those, those kids will tell you when it happened, where it happened, who was there, and how wonderful they felt. And they, they smile, and then, then the church light will shine off their braces. I mean, these kids are in their early teens. They can't even drive yet. And the parents are there, or parents, it doesn't matter. They're, they're right there, right there with them. So we, we look over here, and there, there, there's a, 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 a little boy and girl that turned out to be brother and sister. And the girls play with their hair, and the boys just kind of scuff and split on the carpet. And we go over there, and that motivational speaker, he says, I got this one. So I followed him behind him. He asked the same question. I did. And those kids said, well, I don't, we don't have a choice in that. Wanted to know when salvation occurred to them, how, how they went about it. And they said they didn't have a choice in that. In between the parents, they were over there yapping with somebody else, and, 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 and that speaker he just kind of drilled us kids. He was wondering what the problem was. Well, we've been coming to this church ever since we can remember. 14, 15 year old kids. So the parents aren't saved, they're really. What are they like? I mean, well, it's a gift. Salvation is a gift. They have been given to you? Well, no, they're not saved themselves, so they're not here. And that boy proceeded, the, the speaker asked him, the boy, he, he spoke up, he said, you know what, here's how my parents are. He said, they, and, and I, I'm not going to read the radio, but this is what they, that boy, a 15 year old boy, told me. He said, that my mom and dad, when they come to church, are like different people. They, they put on what they call church mats. A mat. So they come in and they put, mom and dad got this mask on and they come in right behind him and they shake hands with people. Yeah, how you doing? Everything's looking good. You know, how's the unusual weather we're having, isn't it? You know? I was working on it. Hey, look first. Whatever they talk about, they talk about it. They come in and they sit down and they stand up and they praise God, sing a few songs about five bucks in the offering plate, take the very body and blood, sit down again, stand up, get the final blessing out the door they go. They go down the steps. Take the mask off, put it in their back pocket, fire up a cigarette, and on the way to their vehicle to leave, the kids are behind them and yapping the whole time. Talking trash and garbage and stuff about the people that they set beside in church. And that boy, 
He said, Dad, put your arm for race. He backs out, gets your knee for dragging before he gets to the road that they need to turn on to go home. He said, his first cussful trip. He said, when we get home, Dad kicks back the recliner, opens the cracks open the beer, sets her fall asleep, watching TV. He said, my mom opens up the laptop. Gets on there and this thing called Facebook. And starts writing and printing whatever, typing a bunch of crap and wild stuff about how she hates her sister, how she hates her family, how she can't get along with her neighbors, how the work stinks. And she hits this little rat, or click the mouse or whatever, and everything goes across the internet. I call it rat. So everybody knows now. And that boy, I mean, the girl sitting there, she's starting to well up. And then the boy, he's just he's chugging along. He's just telling him, he knows his parents more than the parents. Because they're right there behind him, watching them. Being influenced wrong. Now by this time, that motivational speaker, he's patiently angry. You see that pastor paying him to come into that church out of his own pocket to give that congregation a little stir. He knew his congregation was unhealthy. He knew after preaching for 40 years in that church that it was going the wrong direction. That motivational speaker, he picked 200 people up. Shoot! And set them down hard. I mean, he absolutely let into that crowd, that congregation. A third of them were bawling their eyes out. The rest of them looked like a hundred cats being stared at by a thousand dogs. I mean, I'm telling you, it was different. And he kept going, he kept going. That pastor was over there, just running his hands through his, his fine gray hair, you know, he's squirming in his pew. But those people needed that. Now, I'll never forget. He walked up these chancel steps just like this. <clears throat> I better move this. And he stood there and he was talking about the age and all this other stuff going on. And he says, if your child, if your children can say the word Jesus, and he put his hand up into the heavens and he closed his fist and come down right as far as he could. And so the hardest can't come back up. But he didn't know there was a microphone on the stand right and it was open and on, and it was wide open, loud. And it sounded like a kettle drum with about 160 decibels, decibels behind it. People flinched and counted. Me too. I thought, this is it, the walls of this church are coming in. God arrived right then and there at that church. And it was just like a scene out of the movie. This little five-year-old, six-year-old boy stood up in a wood pew just like this between his mom and dad and put out his arms and said, Jesus. That boy and 199 other people got salvation. Here's the way I figure it. It's a gift from God. I'll read that. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So when does salvation occur? How old is your child to be? It's a trick question. Salvation has been here forever. It's a gift from God. It's an inheritance that we continue to give our kids.
our kids are on loan to us from God. We don't own them. They're on loan to us from God. Sure, we take care of the care of them in the earth. Right? God instructs us to take care of the care. But here's the thing. He can take them back any time. Pastor Jeff will agree with this. That a transformed life, your transformed, your kids is transformed. Life, my transformed life is far greater than any sermon, story, or message you ever hear. Transform life as far as we than a sermon, message, or story. The song I'm going to try to get through, and I need a drink bad, but we've all had our share of loss, whether it be many years ago or recently, and tomorrow is always an uncertainty. I think back to the beach service we had when Pastor. Talked about being prepared. If you're prepared, then you got to ask yourself a question. Are you ready? Am I ready? So the song I sing, if you just put yourself into words, don't listen to the singing too much. It might not be that good. But just listen to the words. You put yourself there. This song is called Lead Me Home. Thank you. 
Thanks, Grandma Kate, for singing along with me this morning. 